Good morning. We will begin the service this morning with hymn number 390, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please stand. Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. <coughs> A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Sketchum. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now. See if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. 
The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. For he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 105. Reading responsively by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders, and the judgment of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. Before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. A reading from Paul's letters to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? 
and how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Lord, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, 
and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It happened 2,000 years ago. Just over 2,000 years ago, an angel descended from heaven and appeared to a humble man in a dream. In his dream, the angel told this humble man, Joseph, that his betrothed wife, Mary, was with child. This special child was coming into the world to save God's people, all people. He would be called Emmanuel, God with us, God with us. We hear this portion of our salvation history during the Christmas season, and our hearts are elevated to a place of great joy and childlike wonder. But how is this glorious truth, this vision of God with us in the person of Jesus, played out in our dailiness in our daily lives, the day-to-day -day challenges of our lives. The disciples in today's Gospels, they were facing a brand new challenge. Sure, they had experienced the glorious miracles of the feeding of 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. Sure, they had experienced Jesus' powerful healing ministry Sure, they were filled with amazement at the wisdom of his teaching. They had even experienced a storm before. In this storm, Jesus was at the bottom of the boat, asleep, and the boat was being tossed to and fro. And they went down and said to him, don't you care that we are perishing? And Jesus got up and stilled the storm. This time, they were faced with a new reality, a new challenge, a new trial. Jesus was not physically around. Jesus had been left back on the shore to dismiss the crowd, and then he went up the mountains to pray. He had sent them on ahead of him to get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They were truly in deep trouble. A storm at sea with rising waves tossing the boat wherever it wished, and they were far from land. We can only imagine the dreadful thoughts that arose in their hearts. Are they going to survive? Will they die during the course of the night? But suddenly, 
there appears a supernatural sight. The figure of someone walking on the rough waves. They were terrified and cried out, it is a ghost. Have you ever experienced terror? I remember it's in my heart seared as if it happened yesterday. When at 11 years old, my mother died. I was 11, my sister was 13, and we both were terrified. We became like twins because we would not go anywhere without the other. We kept going everywhere with each other because we were really full of terror. And so the, two, the disciples were truly terrified until they heard the assuring words of Jesus. The assuring words of Jesus that broke through the frightening sounds of the slashing waves. Jesus says with a caring and compassionate voice, a confident and assured voice, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. We can understand take heart. We can understand someone assuring us, be not afraid. But it is I. It is I. What is Jesus saying to the disciples? Jesus is evoking, telling to his disciples his oneness with the one who created the star, the sea, the earth, and everything therein. Jesus is saying, I do what God does because I and the Father are one. Jesus is saying in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator, who makes a way in the sea and the path in the mighty waters. Jesus says, don't be afraid. It is I. Then does what God alone can do. He walks on the water. He walks on a storm-tossed water, revealing his power over all that's been created. But it doesn't end there. Peter, in his wavering faith, says, Lord, if, if it is you, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. And Jesus says, come. And with that, Peter gets out of the boat. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was OK. When he looked down at the waves and saw the wind around him, then he started to drown, to go down. But as long as he kept his eyes focused on Jesus, he was okay. We do know that the storm-tossed water is a symbol of the trials and challenges that we face in this world, the chaos of this life, the chaos of our individual lives, as well as the chaos of the life of the world, the nations, around us. But the good news is that the turbulent waters do not drown us. The turbulent waters do not leave us drowning. Instead, the turbulent waters become a call to our faith, a challenge to our own faith. Where is our faith in God? We know without that faith, then we are going to be full of pain and distress. We know that pain and distress is going to lead to bitterness and resentment, as it did for the brothers of Joseph, who saw him from afar, and there was no hope of reconciliation. They did not allow him to come close. They did not speak with him. They did not say, come, but from afar, they plotted murder. They plotted his death from afar. So our challenges, the turbulent waters of our life, challenge us to focus on God, to put the focus on God, 
and not our control, our way of solving the problems, but the way of God. The storms cause us to come to Christ with a contrite heart and say, Lord, save me, I need you. A heart that genuinely cries out in prayer and openness to Christ's response an awakening to the power of God that transforms our lives, that we too can say, truly, you are the Son of God. It challenges us then to focus all the trials of this world, focus all our personal problems, whether it is a loss, a divorce, pain, sickness, there's nothing too big for the one who walks on the water. He says, do not be afraid, it is I. I am Emmanuel, God with each person in a very personal and intimate way. Not just in the world, but with each one of us intimately. But Matthew's message to us is not only for us individually, but for us as a community. Remember at the time of Matthew's writing, the disciples of the way, or Christians as we now call them, as led by Matthew, they were facing deep persecution. There was a lot of persecution for all believers as they were in many, many different centuries. And the church is, in Matthew's term, that place of security from the storm-tossed world, the turbulence of persecution. And Jesus walking on the water is a symbol of the conquering power of God in Jesus Christ, leading us to the church into safety. And the church will continue to be because of God with us, Emmanuel, with each individual and with the church itself. If we were to cast our eyes up into the church, the roof of our church, you'll see that the architecture of the church is built like a boat, the shape of the bottom of a boat. This boat is our sanctuary. This boat is a sanctuary for all people all people who enter the door, all people who are in pain or sorrow or fear or loss or betrayals. And we come together and we cry out, Lord, save me. Each time we begin our worship service, we say three lines. We say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We're saying the same words, the same idea that Peter said, Lord, save me. We too are crying out to God for his mercy upon us, his mercy to cover us and save us through times of trial. And so the church is here for us to communally, for us together to worship, to find that nurturing, to find God with us as we seek to go through the turbulent waters of this world. We too find the grace to say with our whole heart, truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus steps into the boat and there's quiet, there's peace. And we know that peace which we sometimes feel in the midst of the storm, because Jesus is with us, God with us, Emmanuel is with us. But the strange thing is this, God does not require us to remain in the boat. God, like, Peter, like, like he said to Peter, come on out into the turbulent waters. We are asked to step out into the turbulent waters of the world, outside of our comfort zone, outside when we've had that history 
with God in us, saving us, redeeming us from those times of trial. Our job is to step out and be the church in the world, living the life of Christ in the world. Not, not just by our words, but by our very being, the way we treat others to be Christ in the world. God with us, or focus on God with us, and not the storms in the world, but be that focus which brings peace to the world, peace to our hearts, and peace to others' heart, because we are focused on the one who is with us. We are part of a band of saints, not today only, but yesterday also. St. Joseph, St. Mary, Jacob, Abraham, all our forefathers and those to come, a band whose focus is on God, the God who is the creator, and the God whose presence in Jesus Christ and the Spirit lives within us to elevate us to the calm of his presence, and we focus on that presence today and always. God with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to join in today's prayers of the people, which is form four in your prayer book on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and your glory. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are linked closely with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pause at this time to lift up to God all our cares, our concerns. Lift up to Christ all that's on our hearts, also our thanksgiving. We may do so out loud or silently as we desire. We pray today especially for the repose of the soul of those who died yesterday in Charlottesville, Virginia, and for all of those who were injured throughout the day. We pray for peace, peace in the world, peace in our nation. We ask God to hasten the day when divisions may cease and we live as one people, God's people. We pray for all who are ill this day. Pray especially for Michael, Grace, Joan, Bill and Corinne, Leslie, Leslie, Evelyn. We pray also for all persons who are facing family difficulties at this time, persons going through divorce, conflict in the family, all turmoil. Pray that they may find peace through Jesus Christ. We pray for all young people preparing for school or college at this time, that God's mercies may keep them and bless them and strengthen them. We pray for all teachers who begin preparing for the new school year. We pray for our musicians. We pray for every person here present that we may be lifted to the joy of God's grace and God's glorious presence. We pray in thanksgiving for God's many blessings on our lives for health for this day, for strength, for the freedom of worshiping together. We pray in thanksgiving that we can have that confidence, that faith, that God is with us always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those who died suddenly, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us 
that, that we, we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace of the Lord. Lord. Mm. We still have the meat? Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> Peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. Peace of the Lord, Hannah. <laughs> the Peace of the Lord. I'll take it. Peace of the Lord. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Hi. This is my husband, Jonathan. We, you might not remember because it was at the funeral, but we met there. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know, I don't remember. I, I know. Okay. And that was a tough day, so. Well, you know, so many of his friends came that we had never met. Oh. Most okay. of the, the church was full of his Jewish and Christian friends. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful problem to have, though. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. The peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. <laughs> it's exactly how I feel. <laughs> the peace of the Lord. 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 I'm going to take the church by section from now on so that. I'll get to each person at least once a month. <laughs> at least when Mark is here, he's giving the announcements and I can keep going. Oh, okay. So next week we have the blessing of the backpacks. I may not know what to do, but you all will tell me what to do. <laughs> Um, the children will start, uh, students will start uh, their uh, school on the 21st. Teachers will be back on the 14th. I'm so sorry, your vacation is over if you're a teacher. <laughs> um, so anybody who is a student or would like even their briefcase blessed on, on Sunday, please bring them up and we'll do that. I had a backpack during seminary, so, <laughs> and I was a 40, you know, already in my 40s. So um, whoever would like to have their, their backpack or their um, suitcase, suitcases, not suitcases, briefcases, bless, please bring them up next week, and we'll also bless teachers and students. The preschool is in need of some materials, and there is a list here on the St. m and and U first page. If you can pick, some up, pick up some of these items, they would be greatly appreciated, and I believe there's a basket somewhere up there where you can drop those off. I'm not sure if you all have been looking at the St. M&M website or Facebook page, but David has been busy, and he has posted two vlogs already. The first one, I think, was all about his hostel, where he's staying, and, and, and what city he's in at the moment, and the last one was about food. Always very important. Apparently, there's a few things he, he already does not like. So... <laughs> I want to remind you that uh, the book club meets on uh, Monday, August 28th at 7 p.m. in the library. So those of you who are interested, interested, please come. I will be there, although I have not read the book yet. I'll probably do it at the last minute, because um, that's just me. <laughs> I, I do want to, I do want to um, in, in, um, give a, a, a warm welcome to a guest that we have. I am not sure your name, but you are from the Diocese of Toronto. Could you please stand and tell us your name, please? Richard, and you are a priest in that diocese? Oh, wonderful. I have a story to tell you about St. Michael. <laughs> we'll talk later, but welcome. 
Before we do birthday blessings and, and, and traveling blessings, I, I just want to mention something, because yesterday was such a difficult day. And I, I have a friend from seminary who's a very well-respected African-American preacher and pastor. Uh, she's well-respected in her community, and she's very well-respected by her seminary classmates. Um, J Jamie is an absolutely wonderful person. She... <laughs> has proven to be a better person than I would be, she received an answer to her post yesterday about Charlottesville from a gentleman who had nothing nice to say. And, that, and it was actually disgusting, his comment. And Jamie said something like, please refra refrain from posting on my site, God bless. I have to say that she is a bigger person than I am. <laughs> Those might not have been my first, the first words to come into my mouth or into my fingers as I typed. Um, but it is obvious to me that, that Jamie is focusing on Christ. We are all in troubled waters at the moment, all of us. It doesn't matter what color, what gender, what ethnicity, what religion, we are all in troubled waters at the moment and we should keep our eyes on Christ because he has called us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, and sometimes that is a very difficult thing to do. But he, we know he didn't call us for anything easy. So as we go about this week, and there's gonna be a lot of news about this, and there's gonna be a lot of infighting in the political world, please let us all keep our eyes on Christ, and I include myself on that because if my eyes were set on Christ, I wouldn't have been thinking those awful things I wanted to respond to that person. <laughs> so let's keep our focus, please. Any birthday blessings, anniversary blessings, or travelers this week? Uh-oh, wait, wait, we have one other uh, announcement. Thank you. And thank you all for providing such beautiful music for us today. <laughs> Birthday blessings, travelers. I know I've mentioned this before that my father was a priest in the Episcopal Church and every time there was a birthday blessing he'd tell the the person's significant other that um, you have to buy you have to buy her and him and them some lobster today <laughs> <laughs> or the most expensive thing that you like <laughs> oh God our times are in your hands look with favor we pray on your servants as they begin another year Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Enjoy your lobster. <laughs> Anniversaries? How many years? Wow. <laughs> oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it, it is represented the spiritual unity be between Christ and and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, 
that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congratulations. Where are you going? Oh, fun! Not the work, but the <laughs> or all the rest of it. You're traveling too? Where are you going? <laughs> I want because that's I want to go with everybody. <laughs> oh God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Oh, okay. We know we have at least one, new, one visitor. Do we have any other visitors today? Father, could you raise your hand? They're going to bring you a little... I don't want to put you on the spot, but I have to. <laughs> Tell me your names, where you're from. Okay, I'm Puerto Rican. Thank you. <laughs> Bienvenidos. <laughs> you're welcome. Anyone else? In the back. Bryce from the Cayman Islands, welcome. I am not from the Cayman Islands. <laughs> Hi. Oh, cool. Ernestine from Margate. You didn't have to come very far. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> one more, one more, one more. Welcome. And if you had come from Africa, you would have won the prize of coming the farthest. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to, to, to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Will the late Eucharistic minister please come forward? Let us send her out together as she goes to visit those who are ill and homebound. In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We will conclude the service with hymn number 608. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.